Hey everybody, welcome to GGS Railways. My name is Greg, this is my YouTube channel. All right, tonight we're going to repair an American Flyer 290. Uh, American Flyer 290 came out in both 1949 and then in 1951. Uh, this was my very, very first American Flyer train. I bought this at a garage sale in 1976. <laughs> so I've had him for quite a while. Uh, you know, the first, the first one always is kind of special, so this guy's a little special to me. Uh, if you were watching the live stream the other night, uh, there was a little accident. Uh, the accident wasn't seen, but it was definitely heard of boom. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, this guy uh, physically isn't hurt other than uh, the uh, truck. And I'll, I'll zoom this in where we can see this obviously a little bit better here in a minute. The uh, truck came off the tender and caused a really massive uh, <laughs> pileup. Uh, and yes, that's the boom sound. <laughs> so all right. So I want to take just a second and I want to talk about something that I talk about every chance I get. Uh, these value guides. So I was just, you know, not necessarily interested in the value. I just wanted to see what years this came out because I honestly had never lo uh, looked and I was just curious. But what, what was more interesting to me, and this will kind of, I think, make my point about what I've been saying about the value guides, about, you know, what it's worth to you. So Lion, uh, Lion American Flyer <laughs> 290. Um, so apparently this guy, if he is in good condition, good condition, uh, he is worth a grand total of $32. Uh, let that sink in for just a minute. <laughs> and then if he is in excellent condition, which by the way, he's not, uh, $69. So, okay. I, I think I probably made my point about these guides. I mean, it is a guide, but, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, what it's worth to you certainly would not take $32 for this. All right. So I'm going to get the tripod over here and zoomed in where you guys can see what we're doing uh i don't know if this will be an easy repair or a hard repair uh, i've done this type of repair before but i just i just honestly don't recall <laughs> so all right let's get the uh, tripod moved and let's get started okay guys so this is the american flyer 290 uh, he is die cast um, very very nice locomotive i have loved uh, owning this it has been a real pleasure um, so for the problem, what has happened is the, uh, <laughs> the staple here for the uh, front truck on the tender has come loose. So we are going to be focusing on that. Um, if you've never worked on one of these American Flyers uh, before, I'll show you something that might save you a little grief. Uh, we don't have to actually leave the, let's see if we can see this. You don't actually have to leave the uh, tender connected to the locomotive there's a little plate right here that if you carefully uh, pry on it it will come out now what I suggest is that you really really go slow uh, sometimes it takes a screwdriver if you use a screwdriver be even more careful but see it just it came right on out so now we have two separate pieces to work with of course we also have uh, and I did this when I was younger I'll, I'll just I'll just admit it was me I put this big screw in here because I couldn't find the uh, proper way to hook these together, but I have some rivets and we're going to do this properly <laughs> while, while we are here. And uh, so we will take care of that too. So let me get some tools and we'll get started. Uh, let me show you, I guess, one more thing before we do get started. So the way this uh, locom uh, locomotive, this tender shell is held on is just these little tabs here. And I took this and had it repaired, rewired uh, back in 1976. <laughs> and so this has been off before and it looks like they just kind of twisted them a little bit. So this ought not be hard to get off the uh, shell. And of course we have to get off the shell because the staple is still inside here. I'm not quite clear how we're gonna do this just yet, but I bet we figure it out. So let's get to it. Let me get some tools and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. So as you can see, we have the locomotive and the tender separated here. Of course, the uh, truck <laughs> that should not be separated here. And uh, this little insulator that we'll have to be sure to uh, put there. Otherwise, we will have a major problem uh, because the power is actually picked up from the tender on these. So uh, yes, if uh, that is not in there, it will not work. It will cause a dead short. So all right, so to get this uh, tender shell off, what we do is we just simply, and you wanna bend these and work with them as little as possible 
because sooner or later, if you do it enough times, which I hope to not do, uh, <laughs> these will break off and then you are faced with having to find another tender shell or find a way to repair it. And neither one is a great or easy job to do. So you don't really want to do that. So, all right, so that came off really easy. Like I said, this is, has been off uh, before. So let's see. So let's see here. I'm trying to figure out how we can show this best on the camera. So there's a lot of wires here in the way, but the one that we are we're going to focus on, the one that we actually need, let's see if I can get some of these wires out of the way without breaking or damaging anything. So all right, this is the first time I've ever seen inside of this uh, of this shell. Uh, it's a little rusty inside, I see. But uh, anyway, so this is the, the peg that should go into the, uh, the uh, truck here. And as you can see, it did in fact come out. So I'm not quite sure how we're gonna do this just yet, but I bet we figure it out. I do have some ideas. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to do is I wanna get the solder off of here so we have just this piece to work with so we can figure out a way to get this all connected back together. So let me get that out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the soldering iron out here and I'm going to try to get this little peg guy uh, loose from this wire. So let's see. Try to do this in a way that you guys can see. Did kind of a horrible job on the uh, <laughs> on the uh, Ives the other day. So I do apologize for that. Uh, kind of got in a situation where I had to really concentrate on that. So it was not terribly easy. All right, so got this guy loose and uh, he looks something like, uh, like this. You can see that, I don't know. So, uh-oh, pick him back up. So what I want to do, I think, well, first off, I want to zoom out, I'm zoom back in so, so you guys can see. So as you can see, that black is rubber along this grommet. So kind of what I would like to do is I would like to get that rubber off, I think, and then maybe remake the staple somehow, either out of a uh, nut and a bolt or maybe a, a rivet, but I think that in any case, we need that, the rubber, that black rubber boot. Let's see if we can get that off. So I wonder if this is still hot. <laughs> no, it seems like it's okay. So all right, I'm just gonna try it with my finger to start with. Um, doesn't seem like that's wanting to work. Let's see. Um, well, let's see. I guess we could try it with a screwdriver. I'm a little scared to get real aggressive with this because that uh, rubber is from uh, <laughs> either 1949 or 1951. So uh, yeah, that's uh, could be a problem. So it's not looking like it's trying to come off of here. Uh, I see maybe a little bit of movement. I'm gonna. Just kind of gently. Definitely not gonna give this any kind of pressure that might break it. So I don't see that moving right this moment. So I'm wondering, maybe if I heated it up again, that might loosen it a little bit. What do you think? I don't think it can hurt anything. Uh, the worst that would happen, I guess, is that it would melt that little grommet. So, all right. Yeah, we got that little nice and uh, warm there. So, pretty much successfully removed the solder, I think. So, I'm not sure how to try to move this, I guess with the screwdriver. So I see it bubbling around that grommet. So this may be our moment. 
our time. So let's see. Um, well, the plier just doesn't want to hold those. So let's see. What I don't want to do is I don't want to grab it because I know for a fact right now it is quite warm. Oops. Well, I just grabbed it anyway, and it's not quite warm. So yes. All right. Um. Hmm. What else can we do here? You know, I wonder if we could drill a hole through here, and uh, maybe it would work like that. Let me see if I can find a drill bit. I'll be right back. Okay, so I could not get this little rubber piece off of here as hard as I tried. So I have another idea, and uh, <laughs> if it doesn't work, well, we haven't lost much. So. My idea is that I think that if I put this screw in this truck like so, and then uh, thread it all the way in, uh, I think he'll go in. Yes, he will. And then attach it to the uh, tender. Now I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking is, well, Greg, what about the insulator? So, <laughs> I've seen this done before on other channels. I wish I could remember where, because <laughs> I would definitely give them credit, because this is a cool little hack. So, what you'll notice is that this big guy here is the same size as our hole here. Let's see if I can get you. you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, you can take my uh, word for it, and that's the uh, insulator that will need to go between the truck. So this is heat treat tubing. And what I think we're gonna do, or what we're gonna try to do, is I think we will take the, the bolt here and we will take the smallest piece of heat shrink tubing that will go on here and we'll make this uh, go on here about, oh, to here maybe, so we have room for the nut. Uh, actually, we ought to measure. Let's see, Let's see what we got here. So it's not going to take much at all. So just a very short piece. And then what my plan is, what I'm thinking is then once we get that on there, we can slip just a little bit bigger size and then the biggest size on there and then shrink them all together. And I think we will have an insulated bolt that we can put a nut on. And I think that will work. So let's try it. All right, so I don't think this needs to be very long at all. I uh, don't have the cutters. <laughs> Let me go get those, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I got the cutters and I've got this guy cut about this long. Uh-oh, about this long. And uh, I'll try to slide him over. This is the smallest piece that will fit on this bolt. So let's see if we can get him to slide down where we need him to be. Uh, if not, we'll figure out something else. Uh, might be helpful to have a screwdriver at this point. Um, I do have one, it's right here. So, all right, let's try this again. So this is not really the way that you are supposed to use uh, heat shrink tubing, <laughs> but this is what we're doing. And uh, once again, if I could remember who showed this I would definitely give them credit because this is a cool little hack so all right it is not moving uh let me see if maybe we can uh oh hold it with the pliers perhaps and then maybe thread it on let's try that well I have to hold it a little bit better than that i think so all right oh it's kind of slippery it's the thing all right well you have to do something similar to chewing bubble gum and <laughs> walking at the same time here, but I think it is going. So, all right. So, okay, I think this is cool. I think this is working. It did, in fact, work. Um, it is a bit split there, but this first one is simply a... a uh, base for the others to shrink around so I think it'll be okay it doesn't actually need to insulate anything so that's pretty cool I think I got that 
pretty well on there. So cool so far, right? Cool deal, cool deal. Um, so I'm looking at this. I'm wondering if this is going to be a little too long, maybe. Uh, hmm. All right. Well, let's just you know, keep going in Greg style, and <laughs> and we will <laughs> cross that bridge when we come to it, if we come to it. So, all right. I'm going to cut this one, guys. About about where it says. Well, you can't read it, but it says three right here. Very scientific measurements, I know. So, all right, got that guy. And supposedly, this guy will just slide onto that one. And so far, that's working. And it worked a lot better than the, <laughs> the one on the bolt. But, of course, it doesn't have threads to, to do. So, all we're doing is we're building up the size of this, of this grommet. That's all we're doing. So, then, last but not least, we have... This rather large guy here and uh, doing another scientific measurement I think uh, he can probably get cut right about here man I don't know about y'all but I'm just amazed by these measurements right here it's all right so we got that guy together it's pretty cool got the, the little insulator here it's kind of perfect Wow, this might actually work. So, all right, cool. Let's uh, maybe shrink this guy on here. Um, yeah, that seems pretty good. So I think I brought the lighter. Um, yes, here it is. All right, so trick here is to heat the heat shrink tubing and not my fingers. If you can help it. So, yes, that, uh, that worked pretty well. Um, hmm. nice, 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 and let's put on the last piece here, get it all shrunk, wow, that almost looks like the old piece, <laughs> that is so cool, all right, well, you know, I'm feeling really happy about that, so, let's get this guy slid through here. Now, on this end here, my worry is, is that there had to be a nut on here. I guess we're going to have to get it on here below these little soldered things. Otherwise, we could have a, a short circuit. But uh, I guess we'll get to that when we get to it. Let's uh, get this nut on here. and see if I can't get this to tighten up. So ideally, I would like this nut to go on enough that it's below the solder before I even start tightening it. And uh, is that going to work or no? I don't know. So, um, I do see another issue possibly. I, hmm. Let's see if when we tighten this, this kind of expands maybe. Let's see. Uh-oh. You need a different pair of pliers for this guy. All right. Um, yes, it would definitely be easier with the other pliers. Let me go get those. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the uh, larger pliers here. Let's see if we can get this to tighten up. I'm really liking this so far. This is uh, working better than I could have ever imagined, actually. All right, well, we got that on there pretty good. Uh, could actually used to be maybe a little looser, but uh, the <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not, but the way that that uh, heat treat tubing, tubing uh, kind of mushroomed out there, that is perfect. That is, wow, that, that was a good idea. So I think I want to make this nut just a little looser though, because uh, my range of motion here is a little, a little stiff. So let's just loosen them just a little. Let's see what that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is much, much better. All right. Cool. Well, I think you ought to be able to uh, maybe flop down with gravity, though. So maybe just a little looser yet. All right. So what I don't want to do is get excited here and, and mess something up, because I am excited. 
I always like it when things uh, kind of start going our way. So let's see. Let's see. Yes, that is that is pretty much good enough. That is really good. All right, cool deal, cool deal, cool deal. So all right. So the only thing left to do here, let's get the rag straightened up and kind of cleaned up here, is we need this wire right here to go to this bolt right here. And that ought not be hard to make happen. And uh, actually, we could probably do that and uh, make sure that it uh, stays down, locked down with the solder uh, all at the same time. It's a win-win right there. I don't see anything that's going to get in our way just yet. Let me get the, uh, the flux and the solder and then we'll get to go in here. Okay, so I've got this fluxed up pretty good. And we just need to get this button down here. Now, you'll notice this wire is pretty short, so he needs to go in a way that his maximum uh, travel this way is going to be here, which is what the uh, the tenor can do. I mean, it physically can't go any further than that on the track anyway. So uh, let's get this guy on here, I hope. It's really warm on my fingers. I should have used pliers. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, he didn't. He didn't stay. So let's uh, let's do just a little friendly bulb of solder here. And then I'll have something to solder to maybe. So, all right. So when I was younger, I didn't have enough patience to make solder work ever. Uh, <laughs> Because you had to be a little bit patient. And I was not a patient young man. I was not. So, all right. I think that'll work. So, let's see here. Got some stuff in my way here. And once again, I should use the pliers. That's actually what was in the way. That's kind of ironic. So, okay. Let's get this going here. I'll put my put my elbow in the flux. That's not cool. Dear. <laughs> well now, that's what you get when you get in a hurry. All right, let's, let's move this stuff out of the way here. And uh, all right, here we go. So, <laughs> so, get our pliers going here. And I think we wanted to right about there this to melt on here I hope should just go right on got a lot of a lot, a lot of issue so that's looking really good so far all right I believe we have it man I love it when a plan comes together so all right um I have no clue if this is going to work, but I believe it will. So you see that wire rides along inside there. I don't see where it has opportunity to contact anything that it shouldn't. So I think the uh, next step is probably to put this uh, tinder back together. And then we'll uh, get it fastened to the locomotive in the correct way this time. <laughs> and uh, we will go from there. All right, so I'm just going to put this back on the same way it kind of came off. I'm not going to go crazy with getting this button down because uh, there's always the chance that we might uh, need to take it back apart again. So, all right, put that guy on there. And then these here. Um... Wow, that's a lot of rust right there. So, all right. Just gonna give them a quick little, little twist here. Uh, nothing, nothing too extreme. Kind of like they had it. That way, if we need to get back in here, which actually I'm hoping we don't, 
because that would mean that we didn't get it repaired. But uh, I think we got it repaired. I think we got it at least as good as it was, probably. So, all right, cool deal. That is still moving pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so you may recall that we had an issue where this guy here was uh, not connected to this draw bar correctly. So we're gonna move the screw, which also, by the way, is not correct. Uh, <laughs> just notice that. And we're gonna figure out how we need to uh, get these guys to go together. Now, I'm not sure if, and let me get this zoomed in. I'm not sure if this guy goes below this or above this. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of looking, a little bit of thinking. Um, kind of an angle down. So we could cheat and we could look at another one. I think that's what we'll do because I don't feel like uh, getting it wrong. Let me go get it, grab another one, we'll look. Okay, so assuming that this one is uh, as it came, which I have no reason to believe it's not because it's got the rivet, the, uh, the bar is gonna go below the connection on the tinder, which means probably it goes this way as opposed to the way I had it, maybe. No, I believe it goes this way. It does go this way. So all right, now we know, so let's do it. Okay, so I have a rivet in here, like should be, and uh, <laughs> this guy's about ready to hook back to the uh, locomotive here. Let me get this zoomed in so I can kind of show that. So this uh, connector, I want to go on here first. Now when you're dealing with these old American flyers, uh, this little brown looking piece is some sort of fiber board type product and it is fragile so you want to be careful and you want to not force anything or get real wild with anything because that will crack and the board that it plugs into will also crack and then you're in for a nice little repair that's not much fun <laughs> so all right so i got that in there and then we'll get this uh draw wire back in here now this isn't the correct screw either but he's worked for a number of years so i think it'll be okay <laughs> so all right let me get my hand out of the way so you can see all right so this bolt is supposed to be one that has a long shoulder and uh, this doesn't have a shoulder so we're not going to tighten it all the way is what i'm trying to say so all right I think we are ready to put this guy on the track and see how we did. Who wants to do it? Uh, I do, for sure. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. The uh, repair was uh, pretty uh, pretty straightforward, actually. So uh, let's get to doing that. Let's see how we did. Okay, everybody, I have the American Flyer 290 here on the track. We're ready to give it a test run, but I just thought we'd get it up close and personal here and look at how beautiful this uh, locomotive is. Uh, this guy is saying it's $32, $32 is, uh, well, it's a little bit of an insult to my locomotive, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think it's worth more than $32. Now, having said that, I noticed in the guide that the tender is valued separately, which is a little beyond me. But anyway, I think the tender was valued at $19. I'm not sure if that makes the, uh, the logic better or worse. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Uh, let's stop talking about that and let's get these guys going. I'm um, gonna get uh, this zoomed out a little bit better uh, so we can see. I just had it zoomed in to where we could just take a little closer look here. But let me get this zoomed out where uh, it's a little more appropriate to actually seeing it run. And maybe we'll pivot a little bit. Let's use kind of the crude camera work there. Uh, sometimes we kind of operate on the fly around here. <laughs> well, okay, who am I kidding? We always operate on the fly around here. Shenanigans, strange shenanigans. That's what it is. All right, so we're going to run them without any cars. Uh, well, just in case he doesn't run. <laughs> and then we'll put some cars behind him and see what he does. So let's check it out. I'm, uh, I'm actually not nervous at all. I think this is going to work. Perfect. Well now. All right, well this is a pretty nice sight. We got the <laughs> American Flyer 290 with his cars behind it and it looks pretty, pretty, pretty prim and proper there, ready to go. Let's check it out, 
see how it goes. I think it would be fine. Alright. Love it when the plan works out. So should we tempt fate and run him along with the <laughs> with the one that caused all this to start with? I think we should. Oh, except that he's not going. Hmm. Oh, there he goes. All right. Well. These uh, Eskil tracks that I have, if you let them sit any time at all, they get really uh, crude and cranky. So I'm going to go faster just a minute and we'll slow them down. Alright guys, well I'm going to be an optimist and say that uh, we did good here. So I believe that one running uh, alongside him, I believe he's at 302, is that right? Let's look him up, let's see, let's see just out of curiosity while, while we watch him run on the track, see what uh, he says. So 302 was made in 48, 51, and 53, and uh, according to this guy, uh, it's worth uh, slightly less. <laughs> Than the other one, so all right, take that for whatever it's worth, too. All right, well, cool. So much for the guide. <laughs> so, uh, I really love these American flyers. Interestingly, when I had my uh, train layout as a kid, I never was, uh, or I never felt comfortable, never felt, I guess, allowed isn't the word, but somebody caught me out of combining the Lionel and the this scale stuff because you know it wasn't the same scale but looking back on it now I, I wish that I hadn't gotten talked out of that because it's really really cool to run all this stuff together well, I want to slow some of this stuff down all right all right guys well I'm going to zoom this out a little bit I think so you guys can see it a little bit better maybe I didn't realize I had it quite that tight on the shot this is actually it's not bad. Not horrible anyway. Maybe up. That's just what I mean, maybe. That looks pretty cool. Alright guys. Well, I think we did a another successful repair on <laughs> a very uh cranky old uh locomotive. Actually I say cranky the uh the two ninety there. That, uh, that we just repaired. I don't recall ever ever having a problem with him whatsoever. So I guess we can't really label him as cranky. So all right, there's, there's that. All right, guys. So I think we've come to the part of the video that I'm gonna say that if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I really really enjoyed uh, doing the video. I enjoyed uh, getting this guy to run again. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure how we were going to do this, but we did it, and I think we did it well. Uh, that ought to be a lasting repair. I, I kind of like the way it all came together. So, all right. Well, if you are a current subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you guys. We could not do this without you. Uh, we appreciate your friendship, your camaraderie, your comments, your suggestions. Uh, you guys just simply are the best. You are the lifeblood of this channel. We really just could not do this without you. So. Thanks again. We really, really appreciate it. If you're not yet a subscriber, well, why not? Uh, <laughs> you don't want to miss out on shenanigans like this now, do you? Uh, we uh, tend to run stuff that's a little little offbeat, a little, uh, I don't know, uh, not common, I guess. Is, is, that a, is that a good way to describe it? I think so. So uh, I'm not saying that you won't see similar things on other channels, but uh, we always seem to <laughs> offer a little bit different twist. So, uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button, man. I don't think you'll regret it. All right, guys. Well, until next time, GTS Railways out. Awesome, awesome, awesome.